Hello everyone, uh, my name is Xiao Ping. Uh, thanks for again uh, subscribing to the XP Education official YouTube channel. Now today I'm going to bring you guys the ADAS model, yes? Now, first of all, uh, in economics, how exactly do we characterize uh, these models? Now, first of all, the Keynesian 45 is based on what we call the short run model. The ADS is more about the medium run, and of course, the Solar Swan is based on this long run model. Now, how do we actually use the ADS? Obviously, in every economic model, we have to use what we call a diagram. So here we go. <coughs> On the x-axis, we have the amount of output, GDP, and then we have the inflation on the vertical axis, okay? The aggregate demand curve is going to be downward sloping. What actually shifts the AD curve? Now, any exogenous change, such as in G, plant investment, uh, could be net export, could be consumption, maybe uh, we say in consumer confidence or uh, business confidence, will actually shift the aggregate demand curve, yeah? So for example, if there's suddenly a massive booster shot in terms of consumer or business confidence, then the aggregate demand curve will shift towards the right, yes? And hypothetically, if there's a sudden decrease in terms of plant investments, then the aggregate demand curve will shift towards the left. So it really depends on uh, in terms of how or what type of shock we have in terms of AD. Now, one last thing before I forget is that uh, there is a thing called the policy reaction function, yes, <clears throat> is often known as the Taylor's rule, uh, it will also uh, directly impact uh, in terms of the aggregate demand, yes. So, the other side we have what we call the aggregate supply curve. Now, the aggregate supply curve <clears throat> is going to be upward sloping. Now, this intersection um, is often referred to as the Y star. Now, it's a good idea to put a dashed line upwards. Now, this straight line is what we call this long run. Uh, agri supply curve. Now given that there is being a model change, so the idea is that Y star is what we call the potential uh, level of output where U is equal to U star. Okay? And this point here, we can call this the inflation target zero. Okay? So what essentially this model is trying to say is that the ADAS diagram trying to explain the relationship between the inflation as well as what we call the, the output. Yes. Now, what exactly uh, actually shifts the AD curve has been explained. Now, I'm going to talk about what are the ways to analyze how the policy reaction function will ultimately impact the direction of the aggregate demand curve. So here we go. <clears throat> now, first of all, before I talk about the aggregate demand curve, I want to first talk about this Taylor's rule. Yes. So what exactly uh, is the Taylor's rule? rule, yes? Now, Taylor's rule is effectively uh, what we call the policy uh, adopted uh, by the RBA, yes? So effectively, it's known as the monetary policy, whereby the RBA will emphasize in terms of its relative importance towards the inflation gap versus the output gap. So the equation is characterized as R is equal to 0 0.01 minus 0 0.5 y star minus y divided by y star, and then we have plus 0 0.5 times by pi, okay? So this is the Taylor's rule. So what we're effectively trying to say is that it is a relative importance uh, in terms of the important the RBA places on the output gap versus the, uh, the inflation, okay? Now, one thing that you guys have to be careful is that <clears throat> it is a negative sign here, right? It's because that we have y star take away y. Now, effectively, if you really want to do this, you can actually say, well, r is equal to 0 0.01 plus 0 0.5 y minus y star, and then plus 0 0.5 pi, yes? So either way, uh, it works fine, but it, you know, it just depends on how you like the equation to read. Now, I personally prefer the second way because if I have, for example, y uh, is bigger than y star, this means that we have an expansionary output gap now, obviously, having expansionary output gap will tend to increase uh, the interest rate to curtail uh, the inflationary pressure, yes? But either way, it's correct, so it depends on how you want to present the Taylor's rule, okay? Now, the next part is talking about the relationship between how does the aggregate demand curve relates uh, with the policy reaction function, yes? 
Now, the policy reaction function goes like this, okay? So first of all, <coughs> we have the aggregate demand curve. We call this AD0. We have inflation. And then we have our output, yes? Now, on the other side, we have the policy reaction function. So this is known as the PRF0. So policy reaction function, we have inflation and we have the, uh, the interest rate, yes? Now, what the policy reaction function try to say is that at any given level of inflation, uh, what exactly uh, is the level of interest rate, yes? Now, first of all, let's talk about uh, a monetary uh, tightening, yes? Now, what does it mean by a monetary tightening? Now, monetary tightening means that the RBA uh, want to pull the economy back because it's been growing too fast. Now, how does it do that? Now, via monetary tightening, the policy reaction function will actually shift up from PRF0 to PRF1, yeah? So this movement is what we call the monetary uh, tightening, yes? Now, a monetary tightening is essentially a way for the RBA to slow down the economy. It's because currently we're already experiencing uh, maybe an expansionary gap. Now, what this is trying to say is that at any given level of inflation, yes, when we have a monetary tightening, uh, this means that the level of interest rate is now higher, or the real interest rate is high, yes? Now think about this. Whenever I have an increase in terms of real interest rate, this means that you have a real increase in terms of the opportunity cost of borrowing. Now, which means that it will pull back the aggregate demand curve towards the left. So we say that a monetary tightening will shift the aggregate demand curve towards the left, yes? So this is monetary tightening. Now, what happens if I say there is a monetary uh, loosening, yes? So if I have a monetary loosening, then the policy reaction function will shift down to PRF2, uh, yes? Now this part here is what we call the monetary Loosening, yes? Okay. Now, if I reduce um, the level of real interest rate, yes? At any given level of inflation, this means that it actually provides some sort of a stimulization towards the demand. So we say that whenever we have a monetary loosening, it will actually shift the AD curve towards the right, yes? So we say that the AD curve will shift towards the right. Now, ultimately, what I'm trying to say here is that the shift will correspond to a shift, yes? And a monetary loosening will correspond with the rightward shift in terms of the, uh, the AD curve. Now, in terms of the shift, it's actually okay, yes? But you have to be very careful in terms of uh, how, what is the movement uh, along the AD and the AS. Now, remember, uh, whenever we try to describe the transition uh, between this short-term um, equilibrium point back to this long-run equilibrium point, it is actually quite important to actually talk about the transitioning uh, back towards the original point. Now, how does the transition occur? Is via the movements uh, along the policy reaction function that can be corresponded via the movement along the aggregate demand curve. Now, how exactly uh, do we do that? So let me show you. <clears throat> Alright, so again, we're going to draw out two diagrams which corresponds in terms of the policy reaction function and also the aggregate demand curve, okay? So, here we go. <clears throat> so first of all, we say we have the output on the x-axis and we have inflation on the vertical axis, yes? And then we have the, uh, the policy reaction function which goes like this. And then we have the real interest rate, and we have the inflation, okay? So, the AD curve is going to be downward uh, sloping, okay? So, what exactly means in terms of the movement uh, along the movement? So, if I say it's going to be a movement along in this direction, this means that we're saying uh, as inflation moves down, uh, the real interest rate is actually moving down, yes? Now, this movement along this direction, if you guys follow my pen, is corresponded by the movement in this direction along the AD, yes? Now, let's think about this. 
how does this all make up, right? As the real interest rate decreases, yes, along this policy reaction function, it will stimulate the aggregate demand curve along the AD curve. Does that make sense? So the idea is that as the real interest rate is moving downwards along the policy reaction function, it will actually provide some sort of stimulation along the aggregate demand curve, yes? Okay, now, what about if it's for the opposite case? Well, if it's for the opposite case, then it's quite easy. Now, it's going to be moving in this direction, for example. So we're saying that the real interest rate is actually increasing, right? Now, increasing real interest rate is about to reduce the aggregate demand curve, yeah? So we say that if there is a movement along this direction, which is the northeast, will be corresponded by the movement along this direction for the aggregate demand curve, yes? So please be reminded that the movement will be corresponded along each diagram, but a transition or a shift will be corresponded by the actual policy reaction function uh, moving, okay? Now, let's go ahead and actually do some examples in terms of how we can use the ADAS model uh, to analyze uh, these impact, yes? So here we go. <clears throat> okay, so first of all, um, let's go ahead with the example where uh, if the RBA decides to uh, reduce uh, the inflation target, yes, because currently the inflation target may be too high, so how do they use the ADS model to actually uh, reduce the inflation target? Now again, with every single diagram, you have to draw this beautiful diagram, otherwise uh, it just doesn't make any more sense, okay? So, we have the output on the, on the horizontal axis and we have inflation on the vertical axis, okay? So, the AS curve is upward sloping and the AD curve is downward sloping, yes? So let's assume that this is the initial inflation target called this pi t zero and this corresponds to the uh, y star zero, yes? And again, it's always a good idea to draw a straight line down just to correspond that, hey, we're currently in this long run equilibrium. Now let's call this uh, point A, okay? Now, at this particular point, both the economy is happy, right? Because we are at the target and the, uh, and the output is at target, right? But obviously, the RBA may think that, hey, this inflation target is actually too high. Now, what can we do about it in terms of lowering this inflation target? Okay. I want you to think about this. Under what circumstance uh, will we reduce in terms of our inflation? Now, when the economy is experiencing uh, some sort of a, a recession, yes? So the idea is that I want you guys to write down is that whenever you want to reduce the inflation 